Good happy Tuesday afternoon, April 26, 2022. I'm Riley King. Welcome to this Tuesday afternoon edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this afternoon, so let's get started right now. First step, one killed in serious crash on Spaulding Turnpike in Dover. Lanes closed in area. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Hi. A better internet experience is finally here. With Fidium Fiber Internet, you get ultra-fast gig speeds on a dedicated connection. That and we're following some breaking news in Dover. Right now, state police say the two left lanes of the Spalding Turnpike southbound are closed because of a serious crash involving multiple vehicles. This video from the scene just came into our newsroom. At this time, there's no word on injuries. Drivers in the area are asked to find an alternative route at this hour. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. One person was killed in a serious crash involving multiple vehicles Tuesday morning on the Spaulding Turnpike in Dover. The crash happened on Route 16 South near Mile Marker 5.4 at around 5.30 a.m. According to the New Hampshire Department of Transportation, two left lanes on the southbound side were closed at about 5.30 a.m. As of 9.45 a.m., officials expected the lanes could be closed for another hour. State police asked drivers to seek an alternate route. The exact of other injuries, if any, is unknown. It's unclear how many vehicles were involved. Friends reflect on lives of conquered homicide victims. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Hi. A better internet experience is finally here. With Fidium Fiber Internet, you get ultra-fast gig speeds on a dedicated... People who knew the conquered couple are devastated after hearing the news of their tragic deaths, and now they're reflecting on the impact the Reeds had on the lives of others. He was just a kind of super guy. Darlington Von Gen is still trying to process the disturbing deaths of his friend and former co-worker, Steve Reed, and Steve's wife, Wendy. The couple found shot to death along a walking trail in Concord last week. He was a good man, and his wife, he and his wife were in Liberia together, and yeah, his wife, very quiet and responsible family. Darlington considers Steve a mentor. He says the two worked together while Steve was serving as an international development specialist in Africa, working on forest resources in Liberia. Steve taught me the discipline of how work, how to work harder and how to be successful. Today, I'm very proud of what I learned from Steve. The couple's family said in a statement released Sunday night that Steve's career would not have been possible without the love, care, and support of his wife, Wendy. As friends and family continue to grieve, Darlington wanted to pass on one message to them. I want his family member to know that Steve touched many lives. He touched many lives in a very positive way. And a contribution to Liberia, my country, will never be forgotten. As the investigation into the couple's death continues, authorities are asking the public for help. If you have any information, you're asked to please call the Concord Crime Line. Reporting live outside the Attorney General's office in Concord, Ray Brewer, WMUR News Not. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report.
popular candy shop in Manchester to close after 29 years. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Hi. A better internet experience is finally here. With Fidium Fiber Internet, you get ultra-fast gig speeds on a dedicated... Well, now on Daybreak, a popular candy store in Manchester is closing its doors at the end of the week. The owners of Candy Kingdom on Harvard Street say that they are retiring after 29 years in business. The store will be open from 10 to 5 today through Saturday. Almost everything in that shop will be half price. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Two New Hampshire restaurants ordered to pay $890,000 in back wages, damages to workers. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Hi. A better internet experience is finally here. With Fidium Fiber Internet, you get ultra-fast gig speeds on a dedicated connection. New on Daybreak, two local restaurants have agreed to pay more than $890,000 in back wages and damages to 63 employees. An investigation from the U.S. Department of Labor found La Coretta Dairy and La Coretta London Dairy violated minimum wage, overtime, and record-keeping requirements. Investigators say four servers worked only for tips and were not paid for working overtime. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Trump Chief of Staff's text messages released. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. To Washington now, the bombshell release of hundreds of text messages involving former Trump Chief of Staff Mark Meadows in the days surrounding the January 6th Capitol insurrection. Chief Washington correspondent John Carl has the latest. Good morning, John. Good morning, George. The Mark Meadows text messages are a remarkable window into what was going on with Donald Trump and those closest to him on and around January 6th. One of the newly revealed text messages says that some of Donald Trump's staunchest allies in Congress wanted him to declare martial law to prevent Joe Biden from becoming president. The text was sent from Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene to former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, one of many text messages, first reported by CNN, that Meadows turned over to the January 6th committee. In our private chat with only members, Greene wrote to Meadows, several are saying the only way to save our republic is for Trump to call for martial law. I don't know on these things. I just wanted to tell him. They stole this election. We all know they will destroy our country next. That message was sent on January 17th, just three days before Trump left office. The text messages, which sources who have seen the material turned over to the January 6th committee tell ABC News are authentic, include numerous texts from January 6th of Republicans close to Trump who were pleading with him to do something to stop the attack on the Capitol. Amidst the assault, even Marjorie Taylor Greene texted Meadows, quote, please tell the president to calm people. This isn't the way to solve anything. Former Trump chief of staff Reince Priebus texted in all caps, tell them to go home. And Donald Trump Jr. begged Meadows to push his father to make a statement, texting, he's got to condemn this expletive ASAP. The Capitol Police tweet is not enough. The text messages also show that some in Trump's inner circle were raising questions about his bogus claims that the election was stolen. Jared Kushner texted Meadows this fact check, showing that Trump's claims that election workers in Georgia had suitcases stuffed with ballots was a lie. Keep in mind, George, that these are only the text messages that Mark Meadows voluntarily turned over. There are many, many others that he refused to turn over, citing executive privilege. Meantime, John, also yesterday, a new setback for Donald Trump in a New York court. 
Uh, this was an extraordinary rebuke from a New York judge who uh, cited him calling him in contempt of court and, and announced a fine of $10,000 per day because he refused to comply uh, with a subpoena from the New York Attorney General. Trump's lawyers say that they will challenge this ruling. I'd like George. to be seeing a lawsuit from that Attorney General sometime soon. John Carl, thanks very much. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. That does it for this afternoon edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Have a great rest of your afternoon, everyone, and goodbye.